Hello, hello everyone. Here I am out on the Glastonbury levels. I'm at um, West Hay, which is an amazing nature reserve quite close to Glastonbury, just a stone's throw away from Healing Water Sanctuary. And uh, I, tr I tried to come out to the levels most days out to the, the different nature reserves and some people coming by they'll probably wonder why is that woman talking to herself over there? Hi! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Enjoy the day, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely lovely. I'm just making a little video. <laughs> if you wonder why I'm standing here talking to the tree. No, don't say sorry, I'm just explaining to you why I would be standing here talking to the tree. No, you didn't. It's point, pointing this way. <laughs> bye, bye. So, yeah, I was just saying, so it's a really lovely place to come and uh, resource out on the levels. And um, there are about five different nature reserves. They're really, really famous for all the wild birds. And today, just as I arrived, there is a whole field of swans all grazing. And then, uh, then they took off and they're all flapping their wings and it was really powerful hearing the, the swans fly. And I've just been wandering around on the levels now looking at all the different things and it's so beautiful. So incredibly beautiful. And uh, hi Jack. Hi Sylvia. Hi Viviana. So when I woke up this morning it was so grey and rainy and I thought, hmm, that's a tough day I don't know what I'm gonna do um, never feel it makes you feel very good on well, me when it's dark and, and raining and so on but anyway I did a few things around the house and then I came out on the levels and once you get outside it's absolutely astonishing once you actually get out and connect with nature suddenly everything kind of comes to life and um, you feel hi Renee you feel way more connected once you're outside, once you get out of the box, sort of out of your home, out of your house. And, uh, you, well, for me anyway, I begin to see all the colours. And although it's grey, as I look around now, there's such a vibrancy. I'm looking at some silver birch trees that are swaying in the wind. And um, all the colours because they've got these subtle shades, all these different greens and browns. All the leaves are changing colour now and beginning to drop. And uh, all these really subtle tones of greens and browns and greys. And I think that's the blackbird. I think that's a blackbird. It's that time of evening when the blackbirds are beginning to say, come on, it's bedtime, time to settle down. So there's lots of lots of different kind of birds, all sorts of wildlife, um, all sorts of birds here. And uh, as I come out and I see that the leaves are falling, so we're moving into winter time, and all that verdant growth of summer is just beginning to, to fall again. And I'm just struck by the extraordinary nature of life and that you can never kill it. You can never kill life. Never, 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 never. It just keeps on and on and on. And every time something happens and, and you try to kind of crush it or uh, kill it or move it aside, if you're planting a garden, you're trying to kind of conquer the weeds, move them aside or whatever. You for a little while, but as soon as you let off your efforts, life comes up again. It just like starts moving up and life just spreads into every, every cranny and, and it's just teeming, life is teeming endlessly with all sorts of kinds of, um, um, all kinds of creatures and it's really interesting because Zach Bush said recently and I'm obviously that when, um, the interesting thing about all the, the major extinctions, period of extinctions is that after each extinction life is coming back in more diversity and, and in more numbers than ever before. So I see life, the God force energy, 
the divine. It's that you can't suppress it as every time you suppress it, it just kind of begins to just come back with more and more energy and, and force and more creativity. And this creativity, it, it's like human beings are incorrect. We harness, we have a, a creativity within us and we harness this creativity all the time to create more and more ways of being. And uh, hello. hello, I'm talking to this tree. No, actually I'm not, I'm making a little video. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your walk. <laughs> yeah, life comes back in more and more varieties and we are life. We are in, inside us, we, we are an incredible life source. We, we are filled with bacteria and viruses and, and they're all working together to create the, the biome and the virome. And we think about ourselves as a single entity. I am a human being, but we're not. We're um, um, a community of, of bacteria and viruses and cells and our cells are made up with lots of different bacteria and viruses as well and whatever is going on on the planet right now because it is really really challenging and we're being squeezed tremendously it's a kind of force really that's kind of um, as it's oppressing us there's this energy coming up this huge arising movement where we're beginning to rethink, we're breaking down the old systems that were very, um, very um, oppressive. We're breaking down those systems that aren't serving humanity, that aren't right, that are only serving um, self-interest and greed, and um, greed for money, greed for power. So those organizations although they feel big and mighty and maybe that there's no way forward and it's a really it's like it's a really dark time as soon as we connect in to our light source as soon as we connect into ourselves as divine beings then we start to flourish again and the energy comes and we've got all the capacity to move through these difficult times so no dictator no force has ever conquered humanity. It's never happened. And human beings are incredibly powerful beings working for, working for good. They're not working for darkness, not unless they've been injured, not unless they've been traumatized. And now we have the capacity, the understanding to heal trauma. And that in the last, I've been working in the field of trauma for about 30 years. And I can say that in the last five years, there's been an incredible flowering in the understanding of trauma and an incredible amount of research that really understands to our when we're traumatized. So there's a huge movement to understand in our collective trauma and generational trauma and how we are so impacted by that. But this very awareness, as we become more conscious of what's happening, then that gives us the capacity to heal. So bringing in the light, bringing in consciousness, and then working together as a global community, creating a container for holding the awful things that are happening in, in light and in compassion and consciousness. When we can do that, we can heal all these things that feel way too challenging and too awful to heal. So right at the moment in time, it's very intense these couple of weeks and my sense is there's a lot of things coming to the surface which are really, really, really difficult to hold. And in order for us to heal them, it's really important that we reach out to each other, we connect, share, we met, we build communities, um, we talk so that we can help each other that when we begin to go down because it feels too difficult and too overwhelming, there is a loving heart that we can reach out to. A loving heart that we can reach out to and help us to connect and to feel empowered. So the question is, can you be a loving heart a loving, compassionate witness for someone near you, someone that you're connected to, 
and support them when they're going through their dark hour of pain and confusion? And can you stay constant even to those people that you're connected with that at this moment seem to have a different understanding of what's going on or looking at things in a different way? Can you still be a loving heart even if it feels painful and they're not really um, able to be in the same place and see things in the same way as you, can you still be a loving heart? This is the challenge and, and this is how our consciousness can grow. If we can keep that compassion and that constancy and together we can heal our collective trauma together we can heal our generational trauma. We are life and nothing is too difficult for us. So if you come to Glastonbury, if you come to visit us at Healing Waters, I really recommend coming out on the nature reserve and dropping by and saying hi to me. It would be lovely to meet you. And as we move into the evening, just think, who is there that you can, um, who is it that you can reach out to this evening and support? So Rennie is asking, is it fall time here? Yes, it is. It's just the start of autumn and the smells, the leaves, the smells of the leaves falling. You can hear some uh, water birds. The dampness, just the perfumes in the air, different from So, okay, I'm going to go, but before I do, let's spend a moment. Let's spend a moment and breathe together. Knowing that our breath is our biggest resource. It's been with us from the very first moment of birth. It's the first thing. And it'll be with us to the very last out breath of this earthly life before we transform. And whenever we're stressed, we can come to our breath. particularly our long out breath, which brings the adrenaline down, brings the anxiety down. So just take in a breath. And a long out breath. And on that out breath, just allowing your body to soften to relax, to be heavier. Knowing that you are a divine being and you are life and you are healing. and nothing can crush you. Be well. Be happy. And bye for now.